is eight o'clock, and I think it's okay to start off now. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say good evening and welcome to the seventh edition of the webinar series organized by the Student Affairs Division of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Kalania, along with Aura Media. And today's webinar will be under the topic, Healthy Coping Skills. So uh, before I get into the uh, interview itself, I'd like to uh, talk about this Greek philosopher Epictetus because he had said something quite interesting uh, that I believe is related to our topic here today. He has said, it is not what happens to you, but it's how you react to it is what matters. And I think we can all agree that we as Sri Lankans undergo a lot of pressure of different kinds, financial stress, social problems, and it doesn't help that the country is in the current state of turmoil that it is in now. And apart from all this stress, us as medical students and medical professionals have a whole other level of stress to deal with, academic stress and uh, extreme hectic schedules. So what I'm trying to say is that we have a lot of stress to deal with. So uh, the million dollar question is, how do we deal with the stress? And going back to what Epic Thesis has once said, how do we react to this? Now, today we are here to answer this particular question. And to answer this question, I believe that we have the perfect person here for the job. And uh, to everyone in our faculty, I don't think he needs any introduction because he's a very familiar face in our faculty and as well as the hospital. So he's one of our proud alumni from the 17th batch of our faculty, Faculty of Medicine, University of Kalania. And uh, we have today consultant psychiatrist and senior lecturer, Dr. Oshan Fernando with us uh, today. Uh, good evening to you, sir. And uh, before we get started with the interview itself, I know that you two are a very busy medical professional yourself. So I'd like to ask you how you're doing and how are you coping with the stress these days? Uh... Thank you very much, Ayesha, and, and good evening. Yes, uh, it's a busy schedule. And uh, so you clearly mentioned the problems we face uh, these days. And I also feel uh, compared to the past, nowadays we face uh, more stressors. And as you correctly mentioned, Ayesha, we are facing uh, issues at national level and also uh, difficulties at our institutional level sometimes at our family level and at individual level. So we are facing a lot of difficulties day to day. And uh, I am also a human being, and I am also a part of this uh, community. So I am also feeling a lot of stressors. And uh, so today we will try to discuss uh, how to deal with these stressors in a more effective and a healthy way. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, yes, as we all know that I believe everyone is facing stresses, and thank you for that uh, brief introduction on what we'll be talking about today, sir. So uh, I think the topic can't hand today we have how to deal with stress and how, how to cope with health stress healthily. But before we get into coping with stress, I think it is better for us to understand in a more professional and uh, have a psychiatric point of view on what exactly we are talking about when we when it comes to stress. So, sir, is it possible for you to give us a small understanding on what kind of stress that we are talking about here today? Uh, yes, Aishan. Uh, so I think I have a slide to show to you. And uh, I hope you can see the slides now. Yes, we can see them, sir. Yes. So the thing is now today, as we clearly discussed, we are going to talk about uh, coping and healthy coping skills. Uh, so before that, as you mentioned, Ayeshan, we need to understand what we really mean by stress. Actually, we use this word, this, this term in our day-to-day -day life. Right? We call, everyone call, talks about stress. But I think most of us, we don't really understand what we really mean by stress. Now, before we move on to coping and coping skills and healthy coping, I think it's better to discuss about uh, what do, do we really mean by stress. Now, I, you can, I think you can see the slides now. So, stress is your mind and body's response 
to a real or imagined threat uh, or demand, right? So it is like, it is not only your mental response, it's your bodily response as well. Your mind and the body, the way your mind and body responds to what? To a real or imagined demand or threat. Okay? So this particular demand or threat could be can be actually existing, right? It's a real threat. Or sometimes this particular threat or demand is not actually existing, but the person concerned imagine person thinks that particular threat or demand exists. That also can cause stress in the individual. So in simple terms, stress is your mind and body's response to a real or imagined demand or threat. Now, these demands and threats are named stressors. Right? So we use the word stressor as well. Now, stressors are these demands and threats which causes this uh, mind and body's response. Now, these stressors we can classify in various ways. Right? And as I mentioned at the introduction, we can talk about these stressors at various levels or difficulties at various levels at national level, institutional level, family level, and individual level. So, we can talk about these stressors at various levels. And another way of categorizing it, uh, these stressors is. Uh, categorize it as internal or external stresses. So I think having understanding about that also important. Mainly, we all are aware of these external stresses. These external stresses such as a loss, right? We lose someone. Uh, uh, let's say, for example, we lose a family member. Right? So it's a loss. It's a stressor for the individual. Right? So we are we are all aware of such stressors. That is an external thing. That's an external stress. And some people face a lot of difficulties and uh, tragedies in their lives, like uh, facing uh, serious road traffic accidents right? and uh, losing certain things in their lives afterwards. Now, it's again an external stressor. And also, change of circumstances. Like, for example, for medical students, change of the clinical group change of the appointment, change of your hostel room, for example, right? So those things are also can act as a stressor for you. And that is also an external stressor. What are the internal stressors? Now, that is the important thing. We don't really uh, think that there are internal factors also which causes stress to us, right? The internal factors such as our thoughts, our own thoughts, can act as a stressor for us. For example, now if you have a thought that I need to get more than 90% for the upcoming, upcoming exam, okay? so that is your thought and your expectation and that can act as a stressor for you. Okay? And if you want to score 100% for an exam, right, it's, it's, it's really hard to achieve that uh, target. But Having that particular thought can act as a stressor for you. And certain beliefs, such as, for example, let's say medical students should behave in this particular way. Right? Even in social circumstances, this is the way a medical student or a doctor should behave. That's okay to have your uh, beliefs about certain things in life. But these things sometimes can act as a stressor for you as well, as doctors, as medical students, to maintain a certain level at various places, right? So that's a belief. So these thoughts and beliefs are actually internal factors. These are not something coming from outside. But these internal factors also can act as a stressor for you and it can trigger this stress response. And with this, as, as a result of that, you can uh, be stressed as uh, due to these internal factors as well. And uh, if I move on, okay, right, we discussed about uh, these things, right? Our life, for example, certain things. We think that particular thing, for example, is uh, something you, uh, you are happy with, you are happy about. For example, having a baby, right? So 
all of us uh, feel really happy and satisfied with that experience and and but on the other hand having a responsibility and change in the in our roles may act as a stressor for you right so even a lot of things like day to day things uh, in this diagram this woman a lot of things like all our day to day things so all of these things can be a stressor for us and if you come to medical profession a lot of things like seeing patients have responsibilities and uh, sometimes patients a uh, severe health related problems may act as a stressor for us right so individually as well as our profession related stresses also uh, affect us most of the time right and uh, and we discuss this right this is uh, beyond our control most of the thing as a country now we are going through a difficult period now in the background now we all feel these stresses in various ways i know that the students are generally you know you are dependent on your families most of the time your parents most of the time but still you start to feel these difficulties now uh, in addition to your academic stress and your day to day stresses right so that's why we thought of uh, having a discussion about this today now is this stress a bad thing for us right the answer is no okay right? now this stress response is the body's way of protecting you right now this thing is important for us actually right we should uh, should be uh, give me a second okay right? so we should have some form of a stress in order to function properly okay right? so it's a way of protecting you and it's a way of helping you to achieve best and also at the emergency situation sometimes it's a it's it's a life, it's life saving for you right so stress is not bad when the stress is working properly you can stay focused energy can alert for example if you have some stress before an exam right you your motivation to do well at the exam and to prepare yourself for the exam is better compared to you if you don't have any stress right if your stress level is zero then you won't do anything right so having some amount of stress is really helpful and help you to stay focused energetic and alert but beyond a certain point right the stress stops being helpful and start causing major damage to your health mood productivity relationships and your quality of life so up to certain extent the stress is helpful but beyond a certain point it is not helpful actually it cause harm to you now with this uh, diagram we can clearly understand this particular phenomenon i am talking about now if you look at this graph right uh, the y axis is your performance right and the x axis is your stress level now if you don't have any stress then your performance also at a lower level so you are inactive right if you have too little stress then with the increased level of stress your performance also gradually goes up okay? and this level of stress is called the optimum stress now that's why i told you stress is helping us actually Right? having some stress is really helpful and beneficial for us because with that our performance uh, get increased but beyond a certain point right if stress becomes more then what happens is you start to exhaust right if you have too much of stress then your performance gradually declines afterwards and if your stress level is uh, so high then you will enter into a phase which is called breakdown or burnout and you will have a lot of symptoms such as having anxiety panic and anger right so too much of stress is not going to help you but we should try to be somewhere around here or to have optimal stress to have the better performance so the message is stress is helping you 
up to a certain level, but beyond that, it is not going to help you. Um, thank you, sir. I think that was a very uh, useful introduction on what stress is because uh, we forget a lot about the internal stress. We think too much about the external stress. So I think it is important that, to, that you emphasize the importance of understanding there is internal stress. And it's funny that you brought out the fact about the exam stress because even uh, it's good to understand that different people have different kinds of stresses because even in our faculty and our batch, we have people getting A minus who are more stressed than people who just passed the exam. So yeah, I believe that's a very unique uh, way that stress uh, affects people. And, uh, and thank you for that introduction on what stress is. I believe we all have an understanding on uh, what kinds of stress can affect people and how it affects the people. And it's also good that we know that stress is also important for us to actually do some work because that is something that I didn't know before. And uh, now I know that you need certain levels of stress to function optimally. And uh, now, sir, I think when there is, as you said, too much stress, we have to cope with it no matter what. We can't change reality, so we have to cope with it. So now comes the question, what exactly is coping, sir? Because uh, we don't really understand this word coping because it could mean uh, facing the challenges as they come or trying to get rid of the challenges or trying to uh, avoid certain problems. So uh, what exactly does it mean to cope with stress? Sir? Could you give us a small understanding on what coping itself means? Okay, Aishan. So it's a high time to talk about coping now because our topic of discussion today is that. Now, the coping can be defined as your efforts to manage these stressful situations. Right? Coping means your effort of managing these stressful situations. Now, coping skills are the tactics that people use to deal with stressful situations. So we need to understand the difference, right? So coping is the mechanism, right? Effort you make to manage these stressful situations and how to manage this, what kind of effort you put, you use certain tactics to manage that. So those tactics are called coping skills, right? So now the, in Sinhalese, if we talk about that, now the Peter, make a peed in that, you know, ट क्रमेदेशन Now, if we talk about these coping skills or tactics we use to manage our day-to-day -day stressors, we can broadly subdivide these coping skills into two categories. The first category is called healthy coping skills. So that is the topic of discussion today. And some of us may be using unhealthy coping skills as well, but sometimes we don't know whether this is a healthy one or unhealthy one, we, we face our life stressors in a certain way, but that particular way may be an unhealthy way of coping with that particular issue. So broadly, we can subdivide our coping skills into healthy coping skills and unhealthy coping skills. Uh, thank you, sir. I think uh, we got an understanding on what exactly coping is. I think. From what you said, it means to reduce the amount of uh, bad effect that happens, that the stress can have on a person. Is that correct, sir? What exactly coping is? Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Uh, 
so yeah, I think uh, the crust, uh, the main meat of our uh, discussion today is on how to deal with coping, uh, how to cope with stress effectively and healthily. So I think uh, our viewers will love to know about how to deal with stress and in a healthy manner, sir. So if you could elaborate on uh, how healthy, how to cope with stress healthily, it will be a great benefit, sir. Okay, so now we can talk about healthy coping skills, right? Now, healthy, if we talk about healthy coping skills, there are various ways that people cope with skill, uh, cope with stressors, right? There are various types of healthy coping skills as well. Now, out of all these types, I purposefully selected two types to discuss today, right? Because I think these are the two major types of healthy coping skills. And if you have an understanding about these two types, then you can further learn about other healthy coping skills later based on these two main important types of healthy coping skills. So what are these two major types of healthy coping skills? The first type is called problem-focused coping. Right? It's a healthy way of coping. We focus on the problem and we try to uh, solve the problem. So we'll explain it in detail. The other coping strategy, healthy coping strategy we use is called emotion-focused coping. So there are two major types of healthy coping skills, problem-focused coping and emotion-focused coping. Now, we, we need to understand the difference between these two types of coping, right? Now, if you look at the name also, you can see a difference, right? In, in, in one coping strategy, we focused on the problem. The, in the other coping strategy, we focused on our emotions, right? So, in some circumstances, for some stressors, we can use problem-focused coping, and for some other stressors, we can use emotion focused or coping. But majority of the circumstances, we can use both, right? Both problem focused and emotion focused coping strategies to deal with the life stressor. Now, we need to understand the difference between these two types of healthy coping. Now, problem focused coping means if you can change the stressor or the threat or demand that causes stress to you, then you face this particular problem head on and try to eliminate this particular stressor to feel better, right? You face the problem head on and you change the threat or the demand. And then with that, you eliminate that threat and you feel better afterward. So that is what you call problem focused coping. You focus on the problem, and try to change the problem and with that you cope with that that's one way of coping with the issues the emotion focused coping means there are certain circumstances in which you can't change the stressor or the threat or the demand you are having okay in such circumstances uh, you have to use certain strategies to manage your emotions now, that is the basic difference between problem-focused coping and emotion-focused coping. Now, in the problem-focused coping, we face the problem head-on and change the stressor. And in the emotion-focused coping, you can't change the stressor, but you try to manage your emotions caused by that particular stressor. But as I mentioned earlier, most of the time, we can use both strategies to manage uh, our life stressors, and both are healthy types of coping. I will further, uh, further elaborate these two types of healthy coping skills. First of all, I will first I, firstly I'll talk about problem focused coping. Now we gave you an introduction and now we can look into details of problem focused coping. Now what do we really mean by problem focused coping is now this particular type of coping is helpful when you need to change the situation, right? when you want to change the situation, perhaps by removing a stressful thing from your life. So I will further explain this using an example. Ending a toxic relationship. For example, let's say you are in a toxic relationship, unhealthy relationship. 
you are having a mismatch of your expectations, ideas, okay? and you are having fights, arguments, and you feel like this uh, relationship is not going to go forward like this. And as a result of this, uh, you feel stressed, anxious, and depressed. Now, how to cope with this situation? Now, you can now, you are feeling now stressed, anxious, and depressed. That is your feeling, right? Where you feel your emotion. But what is the stressor that caused that emotion to you is your toxic relationship. Now, ending this particular toxic relationship is a better way of coping than try to soothe your emotions, right? So, now that is a classic example of problem focus coping. You focused on the stressor and you understand why I feel stressed, right? And then you face that particular stress or stressor and you change the situation. You end a toxic relationship. That means you change the cause which caused stress to you. Right? So that is what you call a problem focused coping. Now, there are various tactics you can use, you can utilize to change these problems or stresses. Right? Various tactics or various skills you can use. So I will talk uh, six things which we can use for problem focused coping. The first strategy, first skill you need to know under this is asking help, asking support from a friend or a, from a professional. Right? This is really important. Uh, you can't ask help from each and every uh, friend you have, but you have to select a friend or a person whom you can trust, and then you can discuss about your problem with that particular person. And uh, sometimes that particular person uh, may have experienced similar kind of a stress in their lives, and that particular person can give you a good advice, or sometimes that particular person can share their experience with you. And with that, you can uh, find a way to uh, cope with your stressor. It's a healthy way of coping, and uh, it is one of the problem focused coping skills. And also, not only a friend or a relative, you can even come and meet a professional who has a mental health background and who has a, a experience in uh, counseling and uh, about mental health related issues. A professional, and that professional can give you uh, 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 input, a professional input to you to solve or face your stressor. Right? So that is also something you can utilize. Now, for example, in, uh, in our faculty, uh, so if you are facing an issue, if you are stressed uh, due to some reason, you can come and meet uh, one of the staff members of the Department of Psychiatry. Generally, we have an open door policy. Right? You can walk in and meet the whoever the person available at the department at that time. Now, with that, what happens is now you get a professional input. Uh, to solve your stressor, right? So it's a healthy way of coping and it's a way of uh, solving your problems. So it is categorized as a problem-focused coping uh, mechanism. Then, in addition, you can do problem solving, right? Problem solving. Now, you can actively try to uh, solve your problem, your stressor, right? Now, for example, let's say, Again, you are in a uh, relationship and uh, your partner is doing, uh, have, having a partner has some behaviors which you don't like. Right? And you tell your partner to you know, change those things. But in the partner's perspective, he doesn't want to, he or she doesn't want to change those behaviors. Right? Now, then you can think about, okay, so I have a problem now. Now, how to solve this particular problem? Right? So, you can use a tactic called problem solving to overcome this issue. Now, first of all, you need to understand. Now, in problem solving, most of us, we feel stressed and we feel anxious and we feel depressed, we feel distressed, right? We experience those emotions, but sometimes we don't know what is our problem is, what is our problem, right? We don't know, right? So, here in the problem solving, the first step is 
you need to try to you have to understand what your problem is so in other words you need to define your problem my example given to you you feel anxious sad and distressed because your partner is having some behaviors which you don't like right so now that is how you understand your problem right and because of this uh, i feel in this way right you understand your problem then what you have to do is you have to think of certain ways of solving this particular issue right most of the time the solution is within you now even though you come and talk to us with uh, with such issues generally you know we help you to find your own solution for your problem you know how to solve that particular problem we provide you the professional input to solve that particular problem so you can think of uh, your problem and then you can think of a solution for your problem so generally we advise for you to think of few options right few solutions for the same problem then you need to think of advantages of disadvantages of each of the solutions you think for that particular problem right then you have to start or you have to practice the solution which has the most advantages to you and least disadvantages to you so that should be your plan a which has the most advantages and least disadvantages after thinking about advantages and disadvantages of each of the solutions you have then you can employ your solution and then after some time you can look back and then reevaluate your problem and uh, if your solution is not working then you can go to your solution number 2 so this is the, the the scientific way of practicing problem solving so this is again uh, helpful for you to change the stressor right so it's a way of problem focus coping uh, actively engaging in problem solving after getting support from someone who knows about it and after actively engaging in problem solving some problems sometimes you can't solve right you can change the stressor on those instances you can take drastic measures such as walk away and leave the situation end in a toxic relationship or leave a job right so those kind of things also you can uh, consider as options but after trying all of other problem solving coping strategies right it should not be the first uh, option you need to take to leave uh, the situation but after failing the other uh, healthy coping skills you can consider drastic measures such as walking away and leave the situation and also uh, certain things like creating a to do list or uh, engaging better time management these things are certain life skills we need to learn right because now let's for example let's say we are having too many things on our plate right we have too many demands and things to fulfill within a short period of time and on those circumstances it is quite natural to feel stressed right now how to overcome such situations now you can use certain strategies so you can incorporate these strategies into your day to day work right the strategies such as creating a, a to do list or engaging better time management so these kind of things help you to manage your time effectively and also you will work more effectively and efficiently now these are also helpful for you to uh, change your stressors and this is also considered as a healthy coping skill and it is a problem focus coping skill and uh, this is really important particularly for us right now in the sri lankan context now this thing is not actually or not commonly practiced and happening right establishing healthy boundaries now healthy boundaries means now if you are a hard working person the natural tendency is for you to get more and more work from others right if you do work and other people generally try to put 
uh, more work on your shoulders. That, that is quite natural for our context. Now, sometimes we don't have skills to say no for certain things, right? Particularly when your superiors try to uh, put more work on your shoulders, right? Now, this establishing healthy boundaries means you uh, healthily say that you can't uh, do or fulfill this particular task within this given time frame. You can explain your current tasks and uh, your current commitments and your current deadlines. And you can politely say that you can't accept this particular work at this particular point of time. Right? And also you can prioritize certain things and do. Right? So saying no to certain things is something we need to learn. So it's a healthy coping skill. Right? And it's a way of changing your stressors. And also, sometimes in our lives, in our context particularly, we don't tell other people that how you want to be treated, Cynthia. Right? And what we generally do is we uh, don't talk with that particular person sometimes, right? And we expect that particular person to read our emotions and read our expectations and act accordingly and do you what you want, right? Which is not generally happening. Because the reason is we are not telling the person, we expect other person to read our emotions and do the necessary things, right? Now, that is not good. That is not a healthy way of coping with your issues. You need to openly tell the other person that what do you expect and how you want to be treated in certain situations and circumstances. Now, that is, again, uh, 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 comes under establishing healthy boundaries and it's a healthy way of coping with our issues and it helps to uh, cope with our stressors directly. Moving on to the other type of coping, emotion-focused coping. Now, I explained in the introduction that here, actually, we can't change the stressor, right? Now, emotion-focused, emotion-based coping is helpful when you need to take care of your feelings. When you either don't want to change your situation or when circumstances are out of your control, right? So, sometimes... Whatever you do, you can't change the circumstances, right? So at this, those instances, you have to use emotion-focused coping to cope with the issue. And sometimes, actually, you can change it. You can change the situation if you really want, but you don't want to change the situation. For example, you are married and you are having children, right? And you are having problems with your spouse. And sometimes you don't want to leave, but you want to manage your emotions. It is not really advisable, but um, sometimes in extreme situations, you need to do it, right? So you don't want to change your situation, but you want to manage your emotions. Those instances also, you can use emotion focused coping strategies. For example, taking care of your feelings following a loss of a loud person, right? Bereavement. You lose a loud person and then that situation you can't change, right? Whatever you do, that person won't come back, won't come into life again, right? So you need to accept the loss and then you need to manage your emotions afterwards. Now, in these kind of situations in which you can't control the stressor, you have to use certain skills to manage with your, manage your emotions. Now, I will discuss the things which you can utilize to manage your emotions in such circumstances. Now, the basic essence here is uh, you do something meaningful and you try to do something positive to yourself and with that, to get rid of negative emotions and incorporate some kind of a positive vibe into your life. Right? So, in this way, you can manage your negative emotions following such incidents. Right? So, the one thing you can do is to, you know, take care of yourself. Generally, most of us don't think about this aspect following uh, uh, when we are in a difficulty. Right? Certain simple things like this or taking or having a shower or taking, taking a bath, right? And small things such as using a perfume that smells good. Right? You can change your perfume and you can change your smell. Right? 
So with that, your emotions, your negative emotions also changes. Right? So that is another way. Uh, this is a way of coping with your emotions. And change your hairstyle, for example. Right? Now sometimes, you know, some girls come after relationship breakups uh, in difficult situations. Now, when we talk with them, um, now the situation is beyond that particular girl's control, right? That the girl can't control that particular loss. In those circumstances, as we clearly discussed earlier, we have to use emotion focus coping. Now, simple things such like change, change in the hairstyle or painting nails, right, in a different color, that adds a positive vibe or a change into the a person's life. And that helps the person to get rid of the negative emotions the person is having before and to have a new beginning with that, right? When the person look at themselves from the mirror, they see a different person which has a new beginning and new uh, expectations and beliefs and attitudes, right? So simple things like that also can change the way you feel. Then spending time in nature. Some people go on trips. Some people go and uh, do certain kind of religious activities, right? So that is also helpful, right? And even drinking something you like, right? Simple things. These things can really help you to get rid of your negative emotions and to have a positive vibe into your emotions by taking care of yourself. And also engaging in a hobby, right? We all have hobbies. But at difficult times, sometimes we uh, forget to engage in our uh, hobbies. Now, hobbies generally derive pleasure to us, uh, gives pleasure to us. Hobbies such as uh, coloring, painting, drawing, right, or listening to music. Uh, we generally encourage people to uh, engage in their usual hobbies. That those things also help the person to feel better after the stressing. Then doing exercise. That is also really important. Like going for a walk, going for a hike, and engaging in a recreational sport, right? doing yoga, and such things also really helping the person to feel better or to cope with their emotions. And also, you can do these kind of things as well. You can focus on a specific task, right? You can try to clean the room, for example, right? Following, if you're going through a difficult period or if you're facing stresses and if you can't change the stressor to cope with your emotions, you can do say, these kind of things as well, right? Like cleaning the room or rearranging the layout of the room, right? You can change where you keep your bed or your, your, your um, desk, right? So certain things, or you can even change uh, the color of your uh, room or something like that. You focus on a child task and try to do that. And uh, some people, they do certain things such as uh, cooking a meal, which they like or learn a new recipe and try to cook that and enjoy, right? So they focusing on a task, which helps the person to get or distract their negative emotions or even reading a book. Um, reading medicine books is not sometimes you know not really helpful but some people yes that is helping but you can read something you like right so therefore you, your focus goes on a different task which you like and that helps you to distract from your negative emotions and to have positive emotions cultivate in you with these tasks and also you can use more technical things like use of relaxation strategies you can use uh, breathing exercises, progressive muscle relaxation. These are called relaxation strategies. And uh, so when you meet a professional, generally this professional can advise you about how to do these things, right? Breathing exercises, progressive muscle relaxation, uh, use of stress ball and practicing mindfulness. And even things such as playing with the pet, is uh, considered as a relaxation strategy. So you can use these relaxation strategies uh, to uh, manage your emotions when you are in a difficulty. 
So to summarize the healthy coping skills, now the sense is there are two main types of healthy coping skills, problem focus coping and emotion focus coping. In the problem focus coping, we face the problem head on and try to eliminate the source of stress, right? And in emotion focus coping, we can't change the stressor or you don't want to change the stressor. Instead of that, you try to manage your negative emotions. And I discussed various strategies you use to uh, um, use, you can utilize in problem focus coping and various strategies you can utilize in emotion focus coping. Um, thank you, sir, for that uh, very informative description on the two different main types of coping. And I also have to agree with you that uh, reading a medicine book is probably not the best way to relax and get rid of stress. I feel like it will only increase the stress also. Uh, but so I had a small question when you said about the objective, sorry, about the problem-based, um, problem, problem-focused coping. You said that it's possible for us to seek advice from a psychiatrist or seek professional advice. So what do you think is the point that we should uh, go for that advice? Like when do when should we feel like we, sh we need the professional advisor? Because I feel like many people might think that they need the advice, but they don't go for it. And some people, even though they are over the limit, they don't take the professional advice. So uh, what do you think is the point one needs professional advice uh, with stress? Uh, Yes, I shall say very interesting question. Now, the thing is, now this particular point is really subjective for the individual, right? So, at the when the person feels overwhelmed and also when the person feels that this particular stressor uh, reduces my performance, right? That is the point, right? You need to think, okay, hang on, I'm feeling stressed. And I am having uh, negative emotions now. Now, what is the stressor? Okay, this particular problem is there with me. Now, will this is this particular problem and this particular stressor and your feelings negatively affecting you? That is the thing you need to think. If you think that this particular thing is negatively affecting you or it interferes with your uh, performance, that is the point. You need to go and seek professional help generally. Okay, thank you, sir. I think uh, we understand that quite well now. And uh, another small problem I had, sir, maybe you'll be discussing this uh, topic later in the discussion. Uh, you, you talked about a lot of ways to reduce stress in the emotional focused uh, technique. And I was wondering, say, for example, if one has to face an exam and there is a very limited amount of time for us to relax ourselves, and that is that creates a vicious cycle where there's no time for hobbies or time for relaxing, and then the stress is uh, kind of increasing just because of the time constraint. Is there any uh, specific advice on emotional uh, focused coping mechanisms when there is a time factor uh, playing so? Yes. Now, uh, the thing is, uh, generally, when you feel stress, uh, stressed over, you know, when you prepare for exam, you have limited time and you have so much of things to do, right? So how to deal with emotions if i ask you to go out and have a hike or uh, go on a trip right? it's not going to work because it causes more time waste and at the end of the day the person feel more stressed as a result of that but always you can use certain uh, small things like the things we discussed earlier like having a tea or having a meal you like right or uh, simple things even listening to a part of a song sometimes is really helpful and beneficial for the person now always we need to think now in those circumstances when you feel stressed and you when you feel overwhelmed taking a small break is an investment without taking the break if you continue on working that will only add more stress and that will only affect or negatively affect your performance at the end of the day. Let's say you try to save around half an hour, but not doing something you like when you feel stressed, right? Now, do you think that you can do wonders during this half an hour, right? So that's the question. 
Now, always you need to think about this addict, the, 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 the rest or the break you take in a positive way, in a positive sense. Always you need to think about this break as an investment. When your stress level is low and when you feel better, so afterwards you can study more effectively. You might have lost around 30 minutes for your, that particular activity you like, but afterwards when you start feeling better, your effectiveness, efficiency of studying is much more. So it, it is at the end of the day, you do a much productive work during a short period of time than continually working and doing a less productive work. Uh, thank you, sir. I think uh, we understood that quite well. Uh, having mental health, thinking of mental health as an investment, I think is quite something quite important. And you also said that uh, emotional, you can even drink tea to emotionally um, relax yourself. And I think that is a good transition point uh, for us because some people, instead of drinking tea, might drink alcohol. And uh, I think we should talk about the unhealthy coping mechanisms as well because now we have a thorough understanding on the good coping mechanisms. So uh, could you give us a little understanding about the unhealthy coping mechanisms that people get can get uh, dragged into also, sir? Yes, Aishan. It's a very interesting question and it's a really important thing because earlier as I mentioned, we sometimes we, unknow, we are unknowingly without knowledge, we may be using these coping skills. We don't know whether this is a healthy way of coping or unhealthy way of coping. Now, as you clearly mentioned, now drinking alcohol or using drugs, it is an unhealthy way of coping. Some people say, Prashna nisa bono. Prashna nisa natang api viluta gina bonna vena prashna akya. Right? So that is a, a way of promoting these things. Right? Now, Prashna nisa bonna is not going to help you at all. Right? Because at the end of the day, what happens is you invite new problems. You are already having certain prashna problems, stresses in your life. And as a measure to overcome these issues, what you do is you take substances like alcohol. At the end of the day, the end result is you invite new problems into you. Your physical health will deteriorate and your financial, social, legal and um, yeah, those aspects in your life also gradually deteriorates and you face new problems in your life. So as a result, the net result is at the end of the day, you will ha be having more problems than the problems you were having before. But some people say that these things help to you know overcome or temporarily or have a temporary relief from the stresses. Right? But what happens when the effect of these substances goes away? Right? The problem is still there and you have new problems as well as the result of using substances. So it's clearly an unhealthy way of coping with uh, your life stresses. Not only this, there are various other strategies people use. Temporarily, these things are helpful for the patient, person, but in the long run, it's not going to help the individual. Like causing self-harm. Right? Some people at times of life difficulties and adversities, when they are emotionally aroused, they try to harm themselves, cut themselves. Right? Now, they say with this, their stress temporarily goes away. And they say they don't feel any pain. right? And their stress goes away temporarily, only temporarily. Right? And um, so this is not a healthy way of coping, right? harming yourself. And also, some people show aggression, right? Some people face life issues with aggression. We have seen some people in our batches as well, right? When there is a mismatch of opinions, some people react to those with aggression, right? Verbal aggression and even it can amount to physical aggression at some occasions. But it's not a way of coping with a stress, right? Or problem. Because it can cause or introduce new problems into you, right? So it's it's clearly it's a not not a healthy way of coping. Now we have we, we are generally seeing uh, some instances where, um, let's say, 
uh, uh, two brothers are having a land dispute, right? So as uh, as a result of mismatch of their opinions, they show aggression and rage uh, towards each other, and they assault one brother assault the other person, the other brother, and as a result of that, other brother may suffer from serious injuries following the assault. After about few days, the person realized that uh, what I have done was wrong. But sometimes uh, when they realize it, they are uh, too late to realize it and permanent harm has occurred, right? So uh, because of that, the aggression, showing aggression is not a healthy way of coping with these issues. And this is an interesting thing. We think this is uh, something uh, healthy, repeatedly venting to others or discussing our problems repeatedly with other people, right? This is something some people generally practice as a way of coping. But mind you, it's an unhealthy way of coping. It's not a healthy way of coping. Yes, getting support and talking your problem once or twice to a person for whom you can trust and getting advice and support is a healthy way of coping. But doing it repeatedly is not healthy, right? Because you are, you are going through the same set of emotions and you tend to feel like, start to feel like you are stuck in your cycle of problems and you are not coming out. And you repeatedly went and you seek reassurance, but uh, you get stuck with your problem at the end of the day. So repeatedly venting to others is not a healthy coping skill. It is unhealthy. You might have heard about stress eaters. Right? Some medical students also, when they feel stress, they eat a lot. Right? And they say that they can cope with their stress when they eat more than usual. But it is an unhealthy way of coping with the stressors because that also invites new problems into your physical health. Obesity, non-communicable diseases like uh, dyslipidemia, uh, diabetes, right? So introduce new problems into you. So overeating is not going to help you to cope with the, your issues. If you practice this, you need to think about it twice. Some people, they engage in uh, compulsive or, the, or, or shopping, right? As a way of uh, coping with their life stressors, always spending. They go and buy certain stuff, certain things. And sometimes they spend a lot of money that beyond what they can afford to purchase things. Right? So that is also not healthy because having too many possessions in our lives adds more pressure to us, isn't it? Right? Too many things to care, that is that adds more pressure to us. So, and in addition to the financial uh, strain, right, having too many things also adds more pressure into you, more stress into you. So, because of that, overspending or doing shopping at times of stress is not a healthy way of coping. It's an unhealthy way of coping. And some actually try to avoid their issues, right? Not uh, understand or face their issues. They try to escape completely from their issues. This is different from escaping from your uh, life difficulty, right? There, you are not avoiding the problem. You analyze the problem and you take a decision and you go away, right? Here, it is completely avoiding the problem. It's a complete denial of the problem. So it's an uh, unhealthy way of coping. Then sleeping too much. Some people tend to sleep too much when they are stressed. Now some we think generally now under stress we can't sleep, but some people they can sleep in time, right? So sleeping too much also are not a healthy way of coping because you lose more time with that, and that adds more pressure into you at the end of the day. And uh, sleeping is helpful to temporarily get rid of your problems, but when you wake up, the problem is still existing, and uh, you will have to face new problems as a result of wasting time. So these are the examples of. Uh, unhealthy coping skills. You may be practicing these skills unknowingly, but if you do these things, you need to uh, stop doing these things. So I strongly discourage 
these kind of coping strategies and I strongly encourage for you to engage in healthy coping skills which we discussed earlier. Uh, so I think uh, I was going to ask this exact question, uh, example, uh, because it's a very common thing, getting poor results in an exam, and it's difficult to face as a, especially a medical student. Um, so what take, I guess you can have both kinds of the healthy coping mechanisms. What do you suggest uh, is the best way to um, face such a situation? Yeah, so I uh, thought of discussing two examples and how we can utilize our healthy coping skills in such circumstances, right? So it's a common thing for us, getting poor results on an exam. Now, as Aishan mentioned earlier, it is not always poor results, right? If you get a result which is beyond your expected level, right, you will start to feel frustrated, distressed, anxious, and sometimes depressed, right? So how to cope? Uh, with this, this kind of a scenario, how to use healthy coping skills in such a situation. Now, here in this kind of a situation, what you can do is you can use a mixture of uh, healthy coping skills we discussed earlier. You can use a mixture of problem-focused coping and emotion-focused coping. Both strategies you can utilize to address the same issue. Now. What I am suggesting is the things you can try, right? There are other ways as well, which falls under these two ways of coping, right? I, just, I, want, to, I want you to understand uh, the interplay between the two types of healthy coping mechanisms, which we can utilize to address the same issue. Now, in this scenario, as problem-focused coping methods, you can go and, uh, go and uh, meet an academic the relevant department and talk to that particular person to identify your weak areas and discuss what you can uh, do to improve those weak areas. Right? So what you do in this is you try to understand your problem and try to change that particular problem. Right? Understand or identify your weak area and try to address or solve that particular problem. So with that, your stress goes away. Right? That's one way of coping with this issue, which comes under problem-focused coping. And also, you can develop a clear study plan that helps you to do better. You may be using a specific method of first you are studying from your O-level time and from your A-level time. And uh, during your preclinical phase of your exams also, you may be using, you may have been using a say, particular way, particular method to study. Now, that particular method is generally successful. Otherwise, uh, you won't uh, become a medical student, isn't it? Right? You have become a medical student because you have done well in your A-levels. So, whatever the methods you have been using uh, is successful. But at the faculty, sometimes uh, you can't rely on the same methods. You have to learn new skills. You have to utilize new study plans. Right? So, you can talk to a professional and you can talk to a person who is getting good results sometimes. Right? and discuss and uh, share the experience and learn through that and new ways or new methods which can be utilized or incorporated into a method of uh, study right? or, or devising a clear study plan. And with that, if you practice that, you can uh, overcome this particular deficient area. Right? Again, here also what you are doing is you uh, clearly head on, you face your problem and you try to solve your problem and through that you try to get rid of your stress. In addition, when you immediately get the result, right, you can certainly practice uh, emotion-focused coping skills because immediately when you get the result, you can go and meet the academic staff member or you can you know, you can't think of a study plan. So initially you have to manage your negative emotions, then afterwards you can uh, think about problem-focused coping skills. Now, for example, here, immediately after you get the result, to manage your negative emotions, you can do certain things like engage in a recreational sport or do some exercise, right? So those kind of things help you to uh, distract from your negative thoughts and uh, to have more positive sense in yourself. 
and also you can rush back to your hostel room and uh, clean the room and rearrange right because you can do something like that to feel better and to have a new beginning with that right so those kind of things you can utilize to manage your emotions immediately then afterwards you can uh, do certain strategies to overcome uh, or, or change your stressor in this case your deficient areas and improve those through problem focus coping strategies which i have suggested as an example now another example i wanted to talk is this right delivering a presentation or having a public talk right now some uh, students when they have such a thing they feel stressed right it is quite natural to feel stressed uh, but some experience overwhelming stress and uh, sometimes they tend to avoid such situations but if you really want to do this you can use certain coping strategies to overcome this stress right here again you can practice uh, both types of healthy coping skills right for example as a part of health uh, problem focused coping you can learn how to write a good speech and how to deliver it confidently right you can learn the techniques of it by reading or talking to a person who does it well right that's that's a one way of coping with that you change try to change your problem right also you can practice giving your speech in front of few friends family members or even in front of a mirror to yourself right practice it so that is a problem focused coping method to overcome this particular stress emotionally you can tell yourself that you can do this a little bit of a prep talk right and encourage yourself by talking to yourself to get rid of your emotions negative emotions and also you can practice relaxation exercises which we i explained certain examples earlier to you right you can use those strategies to reduce your anxiety level and particularly when you start to feel panic right so these are the methods you can use to uh overcome your negative emotions associated with this stressor now likewise we can talk about a lot of examples right in our lives you can use certain uh coping skills healthy coping skills from those two coping skill research problem focused and emotion focused coping and use it appropriately to overcome your day to day hassles Yes, Aisham. With that, uh, this is these are the main areas I wanted to discuss today. Um, so, if I recap, initially I talked about what we really mean by stress, right? And I talked about the importance of stress and uh, when the stress becomes really bad to us, right? I discussed that initially. Then I introduced the terms coping and coping skill. we learned we uh, discussed about it and also when we discussed then, then we discussed about healthy and unhealthy coping skills and under healthy coping skills i discussed various examples of healthy coping skills and also under unhealthy coping skills i discussed uh, uh, several unhealthy coping skills which we may be practicing and then we discussed um, two examples which we can use Uh, in which we can use um, uh, the coping strategies in a healthy way to overcome those stresses. Uh, thank you, sir. I think uh, we have a very thorough understanding on the good habits, such as the healthy coping mechanisms, as well as the not so good ones, uh, the unhealthy coping mechanisms. Sir. But uh, uh, one or two things I wanted to clarify, sir. So. uh um some of them are unconventional so first i thought uh when stress gets unbearable for some people i've seen people crying so i was wondering to which uh category this belongs to so crying or mentally breaking down is that a good healthy uh, coping mechanism or is it probably not the best way to cope with stress uh, is yeah uh, i was yes. yeah. Yes, yes, I am. Now, crying is the emotional reaction, isn't it? Right. So when the stressor is there, when you feel stressed, so crying is is the part of your emotional reaction. 
or the way you express your emotions. Generally, what we in, uh, generally we encourage people to cry and vent their emotions, right? Because after that, the person start feels uh, relieved. Right? So actually, it's not a coping mechanism. It's the way we express our negative emotions and frustration, which we generally encourage for people to do. Okay, thank you, sir. And I was also wondering, since you uh, talked about this unhealthy coping mechanism, such as uh, having alcohol, uh, I feel like some people, because they don't want to seek professional help, for some reason, they don't want to talk to a psychiatrist or talk about their feelings. Sometimes they may be self-prescribed things like alcohol and sometimes even worse, uh, smoking or uh, even marijuana. So I would, so some people self-prescribe. So I was wondering, sir, if people are in fact not comfortable with talking about their feelings, even with a friend nor, nor a professional, is there any actual medication that you don't need a prescription for? I know this is an unconventional question. Is there any medi self-medication that people can use um, that is a good way to deal with stress, sir? Generally, Aishan, um, to deal with the stress, we need to practice non-pharmacological methods as much as possible, rather than uh, trying to take a medication to get rid of the stress. Because medication generally help you temporarily, right? But developing coping skills, the healthy way of coping is something long lasting. And uh, in the long run, that is helping uh, the individual as a whole. Right? So self-prescription is not generally advisable. And uh, always you need to come and meet a professional and discuss your issue and get a formal prescription. And generally, in our ethical practice also, we don't uh, prescribe isn't it, for ourselves and sometimes we don't prescribe for our family members as well. Always we need to discuss our problems with some professional and uh, get your mental state assessed. We don't know. You feel stressed, but sometimes at the same time, you may be having a major mental illness along with that. You may be really having clinical depression or you may be having... Uh, a clinical, uh, clinically diagnosable anxiety disorder. And as part of this, you may be feeling more stressed and overwhelmed. Right? So having the proper assessment, then going ahead with uh, uh, medication as prescribed by the professional is the best way to go forward rather than going ahead with the self-prescribed medication. And I feel it's an unhealthy way of coping. Okay, thank you for that very clear answer, sir. It's an unhealthy uh, method of coping. And uh, since this was a very informative and very detailed discussion, even I had some um, questions that I wanted to clarify. And I think now is the best time to open up this discussion to the audience. If there is anything that needs to be clarified from, sir, uh, let's open the audience for any questions now. Um, yeah, I think it seems that uh, there aren't any questions from the audience. So uh, to wind things up, sir, is there, is, is there any one take-home message that you would like to tell us uh, in, with regards to coping with stress? One, one last thing in a nutshell. Yes. I want you to you know, take uh, home following this webinar is the main two ways of coping with uh, the main healthy ways of coping with the stress, main two types I discussed earlier, the problem-focused coping and emotion-focused coping. Now, if you have a problem, uh, the problem-focused coping, what you do is you face your problem head-on and you eliminate your stressor by doing a problem-focused coping strategy or practicing a problem-focused coping strategy. 
in emotion focused thinking when your circumstance is out of your control or if you really don't want to change your situation you try to manage your emotions afterwards now, if you have this thing in your mind then you can use these principles into your day to day life then you can understand okay this stressor is this something i can change yes go ahead and change then then also think okay is this something i can't change or i don't want to change then try to manage your emotions so that's the thing i uh, i want you to remember following this webinar okay uh, thank you so much for that very important message sir and uh, now i'd like to uh, really formally thank you sir for amidst your very busy schedule and hectic uh, week schedule thank you so much for joining us and on behalf of the student affairs division and aura ragama i'd like to sincerely thank you for joining with us for all this time today uh, thank you sir and also i would like to thank our, our beloved audience uh, everyone who joined here today uh, thank you for joining with us and this comes this this is the end of the seventh edition of the webinar series on the topic healthy coping skills i hope everyone gained and understood that very important message that uh, sir delivered to us and with that uh, thank you for joining and good night Thank you Aishan and good night.